quickly. I mean, you could see um, cultures or, or societies exploding just like phenomena because they can't figure it out. A and that brings up the question that, that if I was, if I had kept looking for reason, you know, uh, somewhere, so I, I will miss all this, all this that's going on. And I, I'm not happy to, uh, I didn't know, what I, by the way, I read from the 20th century, Wittgenstein, and then there was the 17th century, Zarekov, and I, it's clear to me that we're, in a, we're faced with a different century. So uh, Wittgenstein is just as dated for me as, as, as Zarekov was. And, and I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't, uh, I, w I would just insist on the post -colonial. So, two final questions, Edward? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I have a question, but before that, it's also uh, based on this whole uh, issue of relativism. And um, if we take, in terms of language or culture, um, within every language or culture, um, if we take this to be uh, you know, relative, in the sense that you know, true or falsehood or rightness or wrongness um, is culturally or language, uh, it's, it's contextual in, in terms of language language or culture. Um, I think um, I, I very much agree with you in that sense that you know reason itself is diverse, it's internally diverse. Because what would be wrong or what would be right in court within depending on the culture, it's um, we can assign reasons to them as to why and it is accepted by that particular group of people. But um, I just want to want to ask a, a very um, basic and fundamental question. On the issue of human rights, I mean, we talk about human rights and we explain it in so many ways and in diverse ways. In, 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 um, when we take the fundamental or the basic, to me, which is the right to life, which I think that in, within every language or culture is respected, in the sense that when a child is born, that child is allowed, allowed to be, depending upon you know, the, the kind of reasons that might be assigned whether the child is deformed or something like that. In which some cultures will just kill the baby before he, he can see, uh, take the first breath. You know, um, how how would you see that? Because I think that um, fundamentally, the basic human right, which is the right to life, without which I think we can't talk about the others. Um, each and every language or culture kind of see this. So is this, um, how do we assign reason? And the re uh, th there might be diverse reasons, of course, in saying what life should be. But are we then not, um, are, we then, um, uh, are we then not escaping from you know, relativism to kind of an objectivity where we all see the right to life as the basic without which we can talk about other rights, for instance? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a complicated question. I'll try to see if I understand it before I give it a shot. Uh, you're saying that uh, the right to life is so fundamental and so non-negotiable exactly. because it's the condition for other rights. Sure. Therefore, you can't even see why anybody needs to raise any question that might evoke any kind of relativism on that, whether it's methodological or substantive, you don't. This is an absolute for you. Exactly. Question stopped. Sure, because um, we can assign different reasons to that from the, within each culture or language as to why we, um, we accept that. And on that basis, I agree with you that reason itself is, is internally diverse. I agree. But then out of this diversity, out of this diversity of reason, we come to a conclusion that right to life is important. And on that basis, are we not escaping from relativism to objectivity? Mm -hmm. That's my point. Th that's a good question. Th that's also an interesting use of the word objectivity because uh, that's also different from obviously from objectivism, which wh whenever you add ism to something, it becomes like a movement <laughs> again. <laughs> Uh, so, but I can also see the various levels where we have this sort of instinctive commitment that life is good, objectively so, uh, living. and then you see another level where 
you think of the alternatives and then in the end you come back and you make a reaffirmation that resembles the beginning bit. So, so I, I can see those levels of okay. Um, I think where, where I'm not sure I agree with you is, is just the description of everyday lives or life in society. I'm not sure that uh, um, it's interesting to use the word right to life because right, I mean, what, that's a very historically loaded term, you know. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, Hannah Arendt, as you know, talks about, since you work in human rights, talks about the right to have rights. Uh, so obviously, uh, you know, the groundwork that needs to be done there. Uh, but also, uh, actually, in more, than, in more cases than, than you realize, we do make exceptions to you. They're, they're rational ways. We call them sometimes judicial murder. We call them judicial execution. Sometimes you call them legal. Basis. But there are many countries where you have <coughs> uh, uh, situations where some, uh, in, in fact, even, even when there's some kind of death, I mean, you go to court, you see all this, w where reasons play against one another in a court situation, a very formal situation, you see people making gradations, whether this is murder or first degree, second degree, or manslaughter or intentional, unintentional. So I, th I think we do assign, or if you go to court and say that uh, uh, um, you work in a company and negligence caused mm -hmm. the company to make you harm your leg and you can't work anymore, and the court will calculate how many years are left in your life, how many working years, and say how much money they can award you for negligence or for loss of job. So, so I, I really think we rationally argue about life all the time and, and sometimes, you know, give it the fullest room to flourish other times, narrow it, you know, imprison a body or something. Or so I'm not really sure. I, I, I see the philosophical interest that you bring to bear and I think it's very rich, but, but the description you give in terms of when you use right, I, I like, I wish, and I'm sure, um, if, if this was a seminar situation, you have the room to do the kind of work on rights that I, I saw you do there on objectivity. We have one final question. Um, I guess my question is going to be uh, piggybacking on all that's been talked about. Um, you mentioned uh, um, you mentioned Aristotle, and, and throughout the entire talk, I kept thinking of um, uh, well, there seems to be a big R rationality, and there seems to be a small R rationality, you might want to call it, right? Um, so, um, and then I start thinking of um, um, I don't know um, Jurgen Habermas, and, and I don't know the deliberative. Uh, deliberative so I, I start wondering if um, it's the case that uh, that entire project uh, relies on, um, on, uh, on the conception of big R rationality.